Number 10, the ball jacuzzi. I don't know about you guys, but there is nothing better than a nice hot tub. I'd like to say I spend a lot of time in hot tubs with cute girls. However, due to my financial situation, however, most of the hot tubbing that I've done has been at public pools where I shared a hot tub with older Italian and Greek men who I swear were still wearing sweaters, but that was just their hair. Speaking of hair and saggy skin, meet the Tescuzzi, a tiny hot tub for the Pisha deal and two matzo balls. Hey, I understand, your undercarriage has to stay clean and honestly, I would love one. Chris and I were talking about we want one, we might even share one. Who knows? Number nine, the switchblade comb. A leather jacket, smacking jukeboxes, and a switchblade knife. Nobody was cooler than the Fonz on Happy Days. Well, maybe your uncle. Everybody has a cool uncle. But something I just think is silly, or something a lot of men probably use today, or at least the super cool guys who have no idea what or who the Fonz is. The switchblade comb. Basically, it's the same thing as a switchblade, but instead of a small blade, you got something to comb your hair with. Because when you're a man, you have to look fresh and tough at the same time. Trust me, ladies, it's, it's how we operate. Gotta look tough, gotta look mean. And kick the jukebox, Hey, Number eight, the all-in-one. All right, man, this one goes out to us. The manly men, the dads, the sons, the brothers. The men who work all day and night and still have time for their family. I appreciate you and I see you, brother. Want to know why we have so much time, ladies? Well, that's because we've cut back on time in the shower with a very five-head invention. We call it body wash or face wash or shampoo because we use it for everything, three in one. Yes, that's right. If we buy a body wash product, that means it will be used all over our bodies. No time for L'Oreal Pantene or that purple shampoo with the kangaroo. We speed run shower so we can get back into doing the things that you ladies love, like not putting the toilet seat down. Number seven, king of the porcelain throne. Kings, I hear you. Life can be busy, and the shower speed run is not the only product that we've invented. Here's another shout out to all my kings who take extra time while sitting upon the porcelain throne. I salute you. Yes, that's right. Besides doing the hygienic process of evacuating one's bowels, we take a mental health break in the bathroom. A time to check in, relax, take inventory, and take a breath of some not so fresh air. Especially if you ate Taco Bell the night before. Is it strange to sit there in that situation? Perhaps. But like any other guru, we need a space to feel our spirituality. Would Yoda be Yoda if he didn't meditate? Mmm, sit on the toilet, I will. Number six, the beard apron. This is just so smart, and I'm seriously considering buying one because this is the bane of my existence. Sometimes the lumberjack look is too much for me, and the closer I get to looking like Chris Farley, the better. I think I have a great motivational speaker impression. Maybe I'll show you guys one day. We'll see, I don't know. However, when shaving my beard, I have nowhere to go, and it's too cold in the winter to do it outside, so. That's why this is so smart. Basically, it's an apron that you post up like a hammock. So when you're shaving down those chiseled cheekbones of yours, all the little hairs fall into the apron. That way your GF can't yell at you because there's no mess to be made. Necessity truly is the mother of all invention. Number five, bacon products. Who doesn't love bacon, right? Bacon is delicious. Bacon is a delicious meat that can be enjoyed for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Personally, there was nothing like waking up on a Saturday morning as a kid to play some GameCube and eat bacon and eggs, my favorite. I was a tubby kid and I was easy to impress. However, while bacon may not be the king of the breakfast table, it is the bootleg flavor of fragrance and the non-food market. It seems every time there's a store, gift shop, or novelties being sold, a bacon flavored, scented, or themed product is there for men. And it's not far behind. Because yes, we are tough and rugged. And we eat meat because we're cowboys. So that also means we want breath mints that are artificially bacon flavored, right? No, we don't. They taste horrible. It's awful. No one wants that. Nobody wants that. Number four, bath bomb. Call it genius marketing, crazy society, or people wasting money, but a lot of hygiene beauty products that women purchase, men do too. They just gotta repackage it and inject it with 300 cc's of testosterone because men. Take the hand grenade bath bomb for instance. Taking bath bomb to a whole other level. Yes, the one I saw while researching was very colorful and it looked like it had a fruity scent, but it was shaped like a hand grenade from the second world war. No way an adult man would fall for that, right? No. Oh. Chris, you see my rubber ducky? Number three, the man bun. Honestly, I don't mind this trend. I actually think it looks good. 
Certainly better than the mullets of the 90s. There's no way you can tell me mullets look better than man buns. You just can't. The man buns are actually somewhat organized. Especially if dudes grow them out and maintain them. However, what is strange to me is the man bun add-on. Yeah, it's like a man bun extension. You just it's like, a, like a clip on. Basically, look like the guy who plays Wonderwall at every party for the low, low price of $19.99. I can't be dissing too much though, because I wore a clip-on tie to the ninth grade. But the girls thought I was cute? I think? I think so? Number two, gendered products. Another broad stroke here, but when things get placed in the categories, there's always two colors that get used. Pink for girls, blue for boys. While I'm not sure whether colors are actually masculine or feminine themselves, it has been hardwired into most of us, that's just how it goes. Anything plastered in blue or male-like imagery, it's what's meant for men. I, however, as a kid, had an absolute five-head play. To protect my valuables from thieves and villains in the night, I always chose something that was girl-themed, pink, or something a boy wouldn't pick. As I thought, if presented with my stolen items, I could always identify them since only a boy would choose girly stuff. From my Nintendo DS to my notebooks and honestly everything in between. I, Hot Pink was in and Chetty made it work. I thought the plan was foolproof. I, I never really thought though what would happen if a girl took my stuff though. That, that, that didn't, I didn't really think that wouldn't work for that, would it? No, it wouldn't. Number one, wine in a can. This one is just so silly to me and for any wine connoisseurs out there, take this with a grain of salt. I'm no sommelier, but I enjoyed the odd glass of wine, even if it comes from a box. I always thought the wine glass was elegant, higher class, but that doesn't mean you have to be higher class to drink it, or be less masculine. Well, now there's wine in a can for men, because we can't have flimsy glasses, we'll break those glasses because we're so strong, oh yeah. I just can't imagine wine in a can tasting good, it has to be worse than wine in a box, right? Uh, let me know in the comments guys, I'm curious, what do you like to drink? Let Chetty know, I'm, I'm curious, I'd love to hear. Number 10, formaldehyde. You may have heard about this one before at one point or another, but formaldehyde may be all over your entire house, you just don't know it. It's commonly found in cleaning products, lotions, cosmetics, lots of shampoo, so next time your phone's dead and you catch yourself reading those shampoo labels, keep an eye open for this one, this is a big one right here. Formaldehyde is a strong smelling colorless gas. It's commonly found in building materials. And like I said, it's literally in your home right now, probably. It's in the plywood, it's in glues. Formaldehyde is also found in tobacco smoke. So next time you're breathing in that lovely secondhand smoke, keep that in mind. Maybe take a, take a few steps away. A study found that higher levels of formaldehyde are bound to the DNA in white blood cells if you do smoke. So if you want one more reason to quit in the new year, well, there it is. Add formaldehyde to your quitting list. Number nine. Flame retardants. The less house fires we have, the better, right? That's pretty much a great way to be. That's where flame retardants came in. They were these chemicals added to furniture back in the day so that if a fire did start, it wouldn't act as fabulous new flint. Instead, these retardants are added to slow it down. Since the 70s, these were added and you can find them in mattresses, you can find it in couches, blinds, curtains, carpets, anything that looked cozy, odds are it was flammable back in the day. Now, while it's great that we're not starting fires nearly as much, we're still hurting the environment. Many flame retardants have been removed from the process nowadays in furniture making because they don't break down after they're done their use. And then these chemicals can then build up in people or animals over time. That's no good. That's almost worse than a house fire, really. Number eight, chloroform. This one we've probably heard about in one way or another. Chloroform, right? You inhale this, next thing you know, you're asleep. It's horrible, it's no good. Now is chloroform out there just hidden in plain sight? Well, according to the EPA, yes, it is. Just out there lurking. Chloroform is waiting all around us. But don't worry about knocking yourself out out on the way to work. It's not how any of that stuff works. Chloroform is often released into the air through bodies of water. It's in the chlorination of wastewater or pools. Now breathing it in can lead to liver problems and chloroform is created when chlorine mixes with organic compounds. That's when all the magic happens. Back in 2002, there was a study done to measure the levels of chloroform in public swimming pools and there was enough of the chemical that linked back to miscarriages. So yeah, at one point this was a real hazard. Number seven, non-ilphenols. Remember the Tide Pod challenge when we had to launch a global campaign to get adults not to eat laundry detergent. That was fun. Well, those deadly substances inside contained non-ilphenols. They're more often than not found in laundry detergent or other hygiene products. Again, don't eat any of them. Didn't think I'd have to say that, but here we are in 2022. Don't eat laundry. The EPA has discovered that this chemical can lead to reproductive problems in rodents. And a huge concern for the release of these chemicals, aside from, you know, adults eating them on TikTok, is the aquatic system. NP, as it's also referred to, has also been detected in human breast milk, urine, and blood. So it has traces flowing through us right now as we speak. That's terrifying. Number six, try Clozen. Brushing is more fun nowadays than ever. The charcoal toothpaste trend, it's so Victorian era. I love it. 
good. We love trendy mouth care, I guess. The antimicrobial chemical triclosan has been banned by the FDA. It's an ingredient often added to consumer products in order to reduce bacterial contamination, which sounds great, but side effects, not so much. It was often found in soaps, body washes, cosmetics, and mainly in toothpaste. Now, it's been removed since from most of the stuff, but in 2017, there was a study done by the journal Environmental Science and Technology, and triclosan can apparently build up over time on your toothbrush. Yeah, well, it sits in that dirty SpongeBob SquarePants coffee mug for months at a time. It builds up over and over so it can absorb into your bloodstream eventually and put your guts and hormones at risk. Yeah, it's actually highly toxic to fish as well. So even though Canada's federal health and environmental ministries say it's safe for humans, aquatic organisms are still at risk. So again, someone's always losing. Number five, DEET. Being a Canadian, I'm forced into the outdoors a lot. All my friends with cottages always want to go up there for weeks at a time. And I'm not a fan of mosquitoes. I'll stay in the water the entire time to avoid any of them. I can't do it. But I know I'm not alone, right? You and I, we go to the cottage, we hold onto the bug spray the entire time, we put that net hat over and just pray till it's over. Well, that ingredient used to keep those pests away, that's called DEET. Now, on one hand, it's gonna ward away whatever's trying to take a bite from you, that's great. But on the other hand, literally, if you get too much of it on you, you'll develop rashes. Now, DEET toxicity isn't common. It usually happens when you fool around with it, like spray it into your mouth or your eyes and stupid stuff like that. So enjoy the outdoors, I guess, but do so responsibly. Don't put any deep towards your face. Number four. Poison ivy. Leaves of three, let them be. Now, if you're not sure, just don't touch any plants in general, ever. That's my rule, and it's going pretty well so far. If you don't know, don't touch. Now you know. Poison ivy is found all over the United States, and more commonly, in the eastern states. We, of course, have lots up here in Canada. I've been a victim to poison ivy before myself, but let me tell you, it only takes one time to learn. Yeah, that's a horrible, horrible sleep. The itchy rash that you get after you touch the plant, that's caused by urushi oil. Now, this oily resin is stored in the leaves. If you touch any poison and ivy, wash this specific oil off as best as you can, or else you're dealing with a rash all week. Horrible, you'll just be scratching, looking like a crazy person on the subway. Also, don't inhale smoke from this plant. If you're thinking about burning away all your poison ivy, maybe that'll solve all your problems. Bad idea, the smoke that'll come from it, that's gonna do all that damage to your insides, even worse. Number three. Holly. Tis the season. Okay, when I hear about holly or jolly or holly jolly, I don't know, I think of something delicious, right? These these berries are not delicious. If you see red looking berries anywhere, just don't eat them. You're not gonna have a great holly jolly time. The American holly is pretty common. It's an ornament for the holidays. The American holly, aka Ilex opaca, is a tasty treat as well for birds, but don't copy what they're doing because they can eat poison pellets all day long and still be tweeting tunes. They're fine. They can fly as well. We can't fly, we're human, so let's not copy birds. Right? If we ingest holly, we're welcoming in an alarming amount of toxins. One being illicin, which is a one-way ticket to vomiting and nausea and all that nasty stuff. Now, normally I wouldn't include holly on a list like this, but, you know, because obviously it's not too bad. But, like I said, tis the season, so the more you know. I always grew up thinking holly was fun. I'm like, oh, let's eat some holly berries. Number two, asbestos. Have you ever made the leap of faith and explored your own attic? It's usually pretty creepy, and it's also pretty boring. Just a wall of pink, fluffy, pink insulation. It looks fun, but don't touch the stuff at all. Asbestos is a natural mineral made of these thin fibers. Now its primary use was for fireproofing and its origins go back to the first century. It was used mainly as an insulator. Due to its fibers being so fine and heat resistant, it can be added to cement, paper, or cloth. You name it. Its dangers weren't widely known until 1989. That's when the EPA officially banned the use of asbestos. Now it's so fine that you can literally breathe this in. But after that, it's a one-way ticket to lung cancer. You don't want to breathe any of that in. Houses built before the 80s have a higher chance of exposure to asbestos hiding in your walls or your insulation than today. It's a rare type specifically due to asbestos inhalation and it's called mesothelomia. More than 39,000 Americans lose their lives a year because of asbestos related diseases. And finally, number one, arsenic. The deadly poison that supposedly took out George III of England and Napoleon Bonaparte. What is arsenic and why have we heard this name before so commonly? Well, it's incredibly toxic in its inorganic form, but arsenic is a natural component in the ground. So it causes contaminated water, which can then lead to arsenic poisoning. So most of the time you're going to develop skin cancer from this. Arsenic has an LD50 around 13 milligrams. The Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has arsenic on its priority list of hazardous substances. It's a top dog right obviously 
obviously, we've heard this name before. Exposure to toxic metals is a common problem that we're still facing today. We can find arsenic today in seafood, rice, or cereal. Yeah, you'd think finding shrimp tail in your cereal is horrible enough. Now we gotta worry about arsenic. Honestly, I don't know which one I'd rather not get. It comes naturally from water, soil, and bedrock, and most commonly in the Midwest United States and areas of Texas. So if you live there, keep your eyes open, I guess. I don't know, watch out for some arsenic in your Captain Crunch. Number 10, arsenic. This deadly poison took out George III of England and Napoleon Bonaparte, so double trouble. You've probably heard about arsenic here on B. We've mentioned it a few times, a few tragedies involving such. Arsenic is incredibly toxin in its inorganic form, but arsenic is a natural component in the ground, so it can also cause contaminated water, which leads to arsenic poisoning, which in many cases would lead you to develop skin cancer. Yeah, it's not a good road to travel on. Arsenic has an LD50 around 13 milligrams for all you science folk out there I want to go, oh, of course. The Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has arsenic on its priority list of hazardous substances, so it's no joke. Also, that sentence was horribly hard to say. Exposure to toxic metals is still a common problem that we're facing today, so gotta talk about arsenic whenever. Number nine, manchineal tree. If you came to this list looking for poison ivy stats, you'll get those, but you're also gonna get some extra stuff as well. The manchineal tree, upon first glance, looks pretty normal. In fact, it almost looks welcoming, dare I say. The tropical tree grows a low-hanging fruit and can be found in the Caribbean, Central America, and South Florida. So you'll see this on vacation. And if you live there, don't touch this tree, okay? Ever, for that matter. And for sure, don't eat the fruit. In fact, don't even breathe in the air around this tree just to be safe. Just walk by and go. <gasps> the manchineal tree is referred to as the beach apple or na manzanilla de la morte, which translates to little apple of death. So yeah, both apples both bad apples. The plant is riddled with toxins. Even if you put this apple in your mouth and immediately spat it out, the inside of your mouth and throat will instantly be blistered. It's not a good thing at all. It's gonna really suck. The reason it's so awful is because the tree contains a natural chemical called forbol, and it's so poisonous that if you were to stand under the tree while it was raining to avoid, you know, frizz or whatever, the water rolling off the tree would actually burn your skin on contact. Yeah, so if you're a tree hugger, Skip the manchineal tree, we can. Number eight, strychnine. This one's strictly horrible. This next one could have been the reason Alexander the Great met his horrible fate. It's odorless and white. This crystalline powder was once used to treat ailments, you know, back in the day, but they also used to prescribe radiated water back in the day too, so you never really know, it's all pretty bad. Now strychnine is used mainly as a pesticide, so we've evolved, we've gotten a little bit better, we've learned some lessons. This deadly substance naturally comes from a plant called Strychnos nux vomica, commonly found in Southern Asia and Australia. Strychnine can take down the strongest of humans. Like I said before, it killed Alexander the Great, okay? Now what happens is, after it's inhaled or ingested in any way, shape, or form, the chemical that controls nerve signals gets all messed up. It's like an off switch for your muscles. It's terrible. Your body will immediately start experiencing spasms, leading for your muscles to eventually tire out to a point where you can't even breathe anymore. Your neck and your back will arch uncontrollably. That sounds like the worst thing imaginable. Number seven, poison oak. I met this one last summer. Yeah, while I was running through a, through a trail. My ankles just absolutely got destroyed by this guy. So I had to throw it in. We should all know more. Poison ivy, we know about. We're all good there. You know, leaves of three, let it be. It's catchy, we remember that one. Poison oak, on the other hand, is so much worse. These plants produce a harmful oil called urushi oil, and the rash that follows after you make direct contact is called contact dermatitis. So it sucks. It feels very horrible. Poison ivy is known for its leaves. Each one has three tips. You know, we've heard about that. Poison oak, same thing, but it's got fuzz on the underside and it has a lighter top on the thing. So poison oak, a fuzzy bloke. There we go. Now it rhymes. Now you'll remember, and now we're gonna have a great autumn together and not touch any fuzzy leaves. If, yeah, any fuzzy leaf. Don't don't touch it. Number six, the cow killer. If you've seen a hairy red and black bug of any kind, don't touch it. There we go, we're learning today. The eastern velvet ant, aka the cow killer, isn't actually an ant, despite what its name thinks. It's actually a wasp. The female is wingless, so that's why we think it's an ant, but don't let that get to your head. She'll still find you. She'll still hunt you down, even without wings. Her sting is extremely painful. She doesn't get along well with her own type. That's how bad she is. These cow killers are usually found riding solo rather than nesting with hundreds of others. Here's the most evil thing about this wasp, ant, hairy creature from hell, whatever you want to call it. It's a parasite 
insight to bumblebees, which here on Bumblebee, we say, nope, we don't like that. Humans are trying to save the bees. Meanwhile, these females are laying eggs in beehives in order for the wasp to be born and then immediately have an all-you-can-eat breakfast. Yeah, they're horrible. They like to plan. They just throw in one like a Trojan horse wasp. If you have the misfortune of stepping on a cow killer, two things are probably gonna happen here. One, a pheromone is released on impact. Now this calls the colony to then attack. And then the venom is released from their saliva, which is, you know, it's bad and then it gets so much worse. That's gonna not feel great. Number five, the kissing bug. Now I know it sounds friendly, maybe a little too friendly, but this kissing bug is no lover. No, it's actually quite the opposite. These small smoochin' bugs carry with them a plethora of diseases, one of which is called the Chagas disease. Also known as triatomine bugs, kissing bugs are known to suck blood out of human beings. Yeah, like little vampires. We're pretty on the ball when it comes to mosquitoes or ticks, that kind of stuff, but these ones, they suck a lot more. We're still keeping our eye out for these guys. They usually bite you near the mouth, hence their fun nickname, the kissing bug. They give you a little little smooch and then you're ow. It carries with them the Trypanosoma cruzi parasite. And after a quick smooch, that parasite will now belong to you. There you go, pass it on, have fun. The bugs also fart in your eye. They release a gas while they do this, so double horrible. We should have named these guys the stink bug after that fact, it's pretty gross. Number four, yellow boxfish. These guys are a species of boxfish that can be found in the reef throughout the Pacific Ocean and in the Indian Ocean, as well as the southeastern as well as the southeastern Atlantic Ocean, and but to be honest, they're pretty much everywhere. And they aren't necessarily the most poisonous fish on this list, but its method of poisoning you can be a cause for concern, so we have to mention it. When threatened, these guys release their poison, which is called tetrodotoxin, which you now hopefully know about and you'll never forget ever again. The release is less than strategic. There is essentially no aim and they just shoot it out and then they swim away and hope for the best. And more often than not, it works because any of this belonging to you is horrible. It's kind of hilarious, really. They just spray and then pray and then they run away. It actually causes a lot of accidental poisonings as well to both humans and other fish. So they're really hard to study because, you know, obviously they'll just be like, huh, and then run away. And then we're like, huh, and we faint. Number three. Deadly Nightshade. Yes, another name that gets right to the punch. We love those. Teach us by just hearing about it. You know what I mean? Poison Ivy. Deadly Nightshade. Okay, I know to stay away. Deadly Nightshade, aka Atropa Belladonna, is another poisonous plant that Macbeth's soldiers used to poison their enemies. The thing that makes Deadly Nightshade so commonly known is the sweetness of the berries. Have you ever been outside, you've seen a berry, and like 30% of you wants to eat that berry? Don't do that. Curiosity kills, my friend. At least when it comes to the Deadly Nightshade. 10 berries. That's all it takes. And then you're a goner. That's it. Even a single leaf. The plant can commonly be found in Europe, Asia, and Africa, and it grows purple flowers in groups of threes, along with those not so lovely purple berries. So anything purple, just let it purple. Number two, ricin. One of the biggest villains in Breaking Bad. We remember this guy. He's bad. He's a he's a bad mamma jamma. Ricin is a chemical found in the seeds of castor oil plants. Now it looks alarmingly similar to table salts. That's where the real trouble comes in. That's why I'm trying to educate. And also an extremely small amount can kill an adult human being. And they also come from castor beans, but unlike toxic plants, you aren't going to run into any of ricin in the wild. There's more steps that need to be done before you, you know, accidentally poison yourself in minutes. Once consumed, ricin enters your cells and then prevents them from making the proteins that they need. Subsequently, killing you. So your cells die and they die fast. Now, depending on if you inhale it, ingest it, or inject it, the results may vary. And by results, I mean it depends how long it'll take before you meet your horrible fate. Georgie Markov, he got taken out by a ricin attack. It was 1978, he was waiting for a bus, and a man in a black umbrella, well rather an air dart device designed as an umbrella, shot at his right thigh. It was like... And then it wasn't until three days later that that little sting contaminated trace amounts of ricin and then that was it. And finally, number one, a blue ringed octopus. Don't do that. Do not do what you just saw. Do not pick up a small blue ringed octopus or any octopus for that matter, just to be safe. The blue ringed octopus is commonly found in coastal waters of Australia and Japan and sometimes they're not even in the water. Sometimes they're in the influencer's palm. 
just waiting, just being filmed, just in the air. Now in the water, they're great at getting around. They use their tentacles to walk along the ocean floor. They're fascinating, they're fast, they're alien, and they can move into small crevices that you won't even see them. And ideally, that's where you want them to stay. Out of sight, out of mind, and in the ocean, not in the palm of your hand. They're dazzling, but they sure are deadly. The blue ring octopus is lethal enough to take out 26 adults. Yeah, they pack quite the punch, even though they're little, little guys. They're filled with two different types of venom. The first can kill their prey, and the other can be used as a defense. Either way, this encounter is bad news, not something you want to experience. They don't get very large, so keep an eye out, you know? Watch for those little crevices. Wear water shoes, don't touch anything, and hit subscribe. Those are the three rules you gotta follow right there if you ever wanna explore safely. Number 10, golden toads. Don't let its little hands and tiny, cute smile fool you. The golden toad, this guy's pure trouble. Or rather, the alkaloid is on their skin. That's extremely toxic. Either way, you're gonna wanna avoid catching these guys if you're catching frogs one weekend in the you know, humid forests of Colombia. Otherwise, the batrachotoxin will interfere with your sodium ion levels in your nerves, resulting in your heart ultimately failing. Yeah, you thought you caught a toad. Meanwhile, you caught death right there in the palm of your hands. Their skin glands can produce this deadly toxin as a self-defense mechanism, so all the more reason to avoid this guy. Humans just produce sweat. How lame is that in comparison to this on-the-spot superpower? Imagine every time you go for a run, you sweat acid or toxins. That'd be lovely. Number nine, the giant Japanese hornet. Measuring two to three inches, that's like a small drone, that is horrible. This hornet carries a toxin that often leads to paralysis, kidney failure, and sometimes even death. And it's not a quick one either. That's the worst part here. It's gonna take a while. If you're in Asia for a vacation, keep your heads up, honestly. I mean, you're gonna see them coming because they're massive and disgusting, but look extra hard, you know what I mean? Remember when those hornets were a big scare back during the 2020 scare? On the news, they're like, hey, you're worried about this, but check this out. Killer hornets, they also might be a thing. Stay tuned. I'm glad that went away. Number eight, box jellyfish. Let's go under the sea for this one, shall we? We talked about blue ring octopus, octopi, whatever, in part one. These box jellyfish here, also not wise to touch. I would recommend staying far away. Australian box jellyfish have plenty of venom. It's super deadly, as all these are. I don't have to mention that, I guess. These are aliens, really. Jellyfish look so alien underwater. They're practically transparent in the ocean, and its tentacles can sting you with its, you know, millions of nematocysts. Peeing on your leg also won't solve this problem, sadly. I know, you probably got excited. You're like, can I just, you know? Eh? No, you can't. Australian boxfish carries toxins that cause extreme pain, paralysis, delirium, cardiac arrest, and even, yeah, death. All within five minutes. Yeah, you wouldn't even be able to get your goggles off, and then that's it, it's game over. One jellyfish has enough venom to kill 60 adults, so. Unless there's 61 of you going swimming, I'd avoid this. Number seven, cone snail. From a big underwater creature to a small underwater creature. Equally as deadly, let's do it. I'm never underestimating a snail ever again. I mean, yeah, they're slow, yes, they're squishy, and yeah, sometimes they're also extremely venomous. Cone snails use hollow teeth called redoule that are sharp enough to penetrate a wetsuit. So, unless you're rocking knight's armor, going for a late night dip, you're gonna lose this deep sea tussle. The venom in just one of these mollusks is enough to kill 20 adults. I saw these little guys on planet Earth or something like that. It was so bizarre. Caught me right off guard too. So calm and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Number six, the Brazilian wandering spider. Oh God, here we go. This one's a bit different, but I had to throw it in for our halfway point here. Cause it's kinda, dare I say, fun in a scientific way. The Brazilian wandering spider has a bite that can give its victim um, a that lasts for hours, believe it or not. That's a real fact. This animal is also dangerous. Its bite, of course, will hurt. You'll be sweating. Blood pressure will increase, hence, you know, that side effect. They're more commonly known as banana spiders. So I guess I can't eat bananas anymore. There that goes. These little guys have been listed as the world's most venomous spiders in a handful of years in the Guinness Book of World Records. And they hide in funnel webs. It's, it's terrifying, it just looks bad. If its name didn't already tip you off, they can be found in Brazil. And there's eight different kinds of wandering spiders. And my advice, personally, avoid them all. How does that sound? Sound pretty good? There you go. Science is quite interesting here as well. They're trying to create the next Viagra using this spider's venom. The future is here, and it's filled with spiders in some way, shape, or form. Number five, tarantula hawk wasp. What an intimidating name, my gosh. The tarantula hawk wasp, okay. 
These wasps, for starters, they are huge. As you could have guessed, they're, again, they look like drones just flying in to take you away. They have bright orange wings, long legs, their bodies reach about two inches long, which is horrible as well. They're found all over the world except Europe. So if you live there, nice, must be nice, enjoy it. Enjoy stone wobbly roads and the lack of these bugs. There you go. They love the Grand Canyon the most because it's densely populated with tarantulas. That's a horrible fact, there you go. It has one of the worst stings on the planet. Its pain was described as instantly debilitating. Bullet ant stings can last 24 hours, but these ones only last five minutes. Sounds like a better alternate, but these wasps are ranked on the highest in the pain index. Would you rather have an unimaginable pain for five minutes or just, you know, plain old awful pain for 24 hours? Which one? Comment down below. Me personally, I would do the five minutes. Get it done. Cause you know what? Either way, I'm probably gonna faint, right? Let's get over faster. Number four, blister beetles. This one sounds great, wonder what he does. The blister beetle is chock full of cantharidin, also seen in the Spanish fly. So if you see any of these two, they're doing a heist. Get out of there. Back in the day, medical experts would actually use cantharidin to induce blisters. That was a common remedy. Just, hey, here's a blister, hope you feel better. Let's see. These little bugs have this poison inside of them. Blister beetles are tiny and they often sport this metallic, beautiful green or blue wing cover. They look like a futuristic beetle, it's awesome. If a bird tries to eat one of these, well, stick around and watch for a bit because that beetle will come right back up and then continue on its little beetle business. On the outside, cantharidin causes a dermatitis reaction. And if you have the misfortune of swallowing one of these, well, like that sad bird in question, it could very well be your last meal. So don't be licking or eating any beetles. Back in the 1800s, people would lick them. Don't do that, don't lick beetles. We don't lick bugs here on Bumblebee. We just subscribe to them. Ah, he did it. Number three, Black Widow. Ooh, we've all heard about this one, but just how bad is her bite? The Black Widow is not only extremely painful, but it's incredibly toxic, obviously. At first, you may not even feel anything that bizarre. You may think you were bit by a mosquito, something tame, there's slight irritation of the skin at first, nothing too bad. But an hour goes by, oh, much, much worse. You'll be disoriented, dizzy, nauseous, your breathing will become very difficult. Other words that start with the letter D, all because of one little one little bite. Male black widows, they're much smaller and they contain much less venom than that of the female. A fact you may have heard already about the spider that you probably have locked and loaded in your head is that the female black widow actually begins eating the male while they're getting it on. Yeah, that's brutal. Top 10 ways to spice up your spider marriage. There we go, you won't believe number four, unreal. If you do get bit, just take it slow and breathe because we actually do have an anti-venom for this one. Number two. Comb stars. We do not have an antidote for this one. I'll tell you that right off the bat. We had a nice happy ending with the third one, pun intended, but now this one's not that fun. Ocean life is by far the scariest thing out there. We have no idea how deep our oceans go, what's in them. I, I, I personally vote aliens, but we discover crazy new fish species every single year. I just click refresh and I'm like, oh, look at these aliens. On one hand, it's fascinating. We discover deep sea fish with bioluminescence that we never thought even existed until now. But we've also discovered new natural predators, like the comb star, for example. He's new, he's the new bully on the block. A starfish that contains tetrodoxin. Yeah, that classic toxin. Everyone loves that one, there we go. This deadly neurotoxin can again cause paralysis. For every gram of comb star flesh, there's enough toxin to take out 500 mice. That's a lot of mice. That's a lot of Stuart Little extras just biting the bullet just because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And finally, number one, area night. Yeah, we'll finish off with tiny crystals that you might accidentally inhale. That's terrifying, that's a new fear. Let's talk about it. What a way to finish part two. Area night in its natural form is fascinating as most of these crystals are, right? It's this fiber almost. It's a thin mineral that if touched will immediately break apart into tiny pieces that you can <gasps> inhale. First of all, that's not gonna feel good. If you ever had glass stuck in your hand, this is already gonna feel worse, just stuck in your hand, it's horrible. Arianite is part of a group of minerals called zeolites, and they're these hollow minerals with hairy insides almost. It looks fuzzy, but it's, I can guarantee you it's not, it is not fuzzy. Exposure to these can cause lung cancer, but luckily arianite mining stopped back in the 80s, but that doesn't mean miners are necessarily off the hook. Even when mining other zeolites, this deadly mineral can still be present in attack. It was discovered in 1898, but it wasn't until the 1970s where the Turkish government found out that it was actually lethal. 
So that whole time, miners were just <sighs> inhaling poison. They did a study on why there was so much mesothelioma in the lungs of villagers in the mountainous region. And this is the answer. This mineral was the cause for 43% of those deaths. The death rate for asbestos installers was around a 9.7%, just to give you a little you know, idea. Number 10. Mercury. Side note, if you did what we do here on Bumblebee, throw us a thumbs up down below or tell us which deadly products you know of. Or if you grew up in the 1600s, then let us know how you're feeling, you know? Because if you're as mad as a hatter, you might be slowly dying from mercury poisoning. From your head down. Due to the tons of hat makers who were slowly dropping one by one from the 18th to the 19th century. Apparently lots of men's hats at the time were made of animal fur. Fox, rabbit, beaver, whatever you like. Hatters would wash them up, then mercury-based solution or brushed mercury onto the hair to make them felt and stick together. Yeah, pretty well a nice little toxic glue or spray you're just inhaling and wearing all day. Paranoid psychological outbursts, then tooth loss, and then even death. Erethism in a nutshell. That sounds horrible and terrifying and scary, you know? Number nine, lead. Way before PETA and proper FDA regulated testing and distribution of cosmetic products, it was pretty medieval, literally. Like, people were using duck poo and all sorts of things on their head to feel beautiful. Not their fault, they didn't really know, of course. Well, neither did we, apparently. Lead, gasoline, pipes, bullets. We were messing around with this stuff way back. Egyptians were breaking off lead while sculpting, grinding it up into powders and adding it to salted dyes to wear as makeup for sun protection way before they knew what the do's and the don'ts were. It actually wasn't until the 18th century when we really started to ask, why is everyone so sick around this stuff all the time? Blindness, mental health disorders, kidney failure, seizures. People in Elizabethan times just teeth rotting, you know, bald like me. Ah, oh, this new lead powder is delightful, Winston. Merry Christmas, thank you. <gasps> Number eight, arsenic. When we think about deadly fashion over the years, arsenic is one that comes to mind pretty quick. The Victorians had a complicated love-hate relationship with the chemical due to its beautiful and bright green color it was known for. It was the talk of the town in 1775, of course, when chemist Carl Wilhelm Schiel mixed sodium carbonate, arsenic oxide, and copper sulfate. Boy, oh boy, the green dye that came from that. <whistles> Famously known as Schiel's green, then we just started to slather it all on our face. Yeah, for the small price of only a dollar. Basically the precursor to every dermatologist's nightmare, the face cleaner. Dr. James P. Campbell's arsenic complexion wafers. The indications or uses for this product are as follows. Freckles, moth, blackheads, pimples, and other facial disfigurements are permanently removed and a deliciously clear complexion. Also an absolute specific in loss of appetite, low spirits, headaches, and hay fever. Like was this guy even a doctor? This sounds all made up. Low spirits? Here's some arsenic, just slap it on there. Yeah, your spirits will be high soon enough. Like what? Number seven, Violet Rays. Not gonna lie, sounds like a pretty cool spy name, doesn't it? Violet Rays. Nope, just a dangerously weird cosmetic trend we tried like a hundred years ago. Yeah, like 20s to the 40s type thing. And it was selling like hotcakes. Basically, a violet ray is an antique medical appliance used in electrotherapy. A disruptive discharge coil with an interrupter to apply a high voltage, high frequency, low current to the human body for therapeutic purposes. Yeah, cured depression it said. Also in 1922, it was sold to make you more vital, magnetic, and compelling. Yeah, just walking around like Uncle Fester from the Adams Family, slowly electrocuting yourself day after day. Whatever it did or didn't do, recalls and lawsuits over this thing led to the FDA banning these. The last manufacturer of violet rays devices in the US was Master Electric. But in 1951, the company was sued and yeah, stopped pretty quickly. I can hear it now. Some people are dull, drab, uninteresting, and sickly. Which are you? With a new Virex, you can shock yourself into beauty. Today! Like an old Fallout commercial? Like, that's terrifying. Number six, celluloid. Celluloids are a class of materials produced by mixing nitrocellulose and camphor, often with dyes to form objects. Common celluloids we know are ping pong balls, instruments, office equipment, guitar picks, and famously throughout the ages, Combs, pretty well the first ever plastic, you know? Yeah, see the problem with this stuff is that when it heats up, it becomes super flammable. 
and can even tend to explode. Yeah, just ripping a solo and it catches fire on stage. I mean, it sounds pretty sick, right? Well, when a comb explodes in your hair, exploding with little shrapnel pieces, which was the case for like the last 300 years, people become a tiny bit concerned. Flammable flammable, you know? Like the stuff they used in old movie reels. Like what magicians use for the fire trick, you know? Like that, on your head. The sneaky thing is celluloid ages. Yeah, the camphor molecules become more pressurized until they crystallize and catch fire or even release nitrogen gases like nitrous oxide into the air. Ton of fires, deadly stuff, you know. No good, no good. Number five. Cantharidin. Okay, we all want to know what this magical elixir is that gives us that commercial like thick and zesty hair that flows like locks, Farrah Fawcett, Fabio blowout lion's mane style. But not all of us are blessed with such a luck. People have been tinkering at this whole hair growth thing for a while now, and we think we figured it out. Blister beetles. Hear me out, hold on. We squeeze out a beetle's larvae juice and use it on our heads. Approximately 2,500 species of beetles secrete this substance called cantharidin, which is collected mainly from the Spanish fly and liquefied into a topical. Removes warts, gets rid of pimples, and apparently burns off all your head hair so that new hair grows. Yeah, kind of like an unapproved FDA strength nair. Also used in love potions. <laughs> of course. How did I not know that? Apparently Caesar's wife laced meals with Spanish fly to spark illicit activity and blackmail the politicians into strategic manipulations. Side effects include difficulty breathing, violent convulsions, coma, and even death. And of course, hair loss. Well, ain't that a kick in the shorts, huh? Hair loss. Number four, petroleum. We know this stuff. It's been used in a ton of beauty products over the years. Popular during the 19th century, Petrol acted as a dry shampoo, stripping the hair of dirt and grease and oil by applying more grease and oil. And of course, lip balms and salves. Apparently, this stuff was a hit. Robert Chessborough's new type of petroleum jelly for your lips called Vaseline. Or how about Madame Fox's Life for the Hair? But these jelly-based lotions and salves sometimes led to fatal consequences. Basically, not only a carcinogen, it was really flammable. I mean, thank God we don't have like torches on walls you can just like walk into, but still, petroleum jelly ain't good for you. It has carcinogens like polyaromatic hydrocarbons that cause all sorts of cancers. Also, kidney toxins, neurotoxins, respiratory toxins. Gotta go organic, people. You know, little beeswax on the lips. Number three. X-rays. The early 20th century was full of, yay, we did this, and ah, we definitely shouldn't have done that. Like history is made from trial and error. There was always something new to try. In the early 1900s, the latest craze was X-rays. Yep, like X-rays, like you broke your tibia and fibula here, and now we're looking at it on a 4K screen. All you needed was a cathode ray tube and a power source. People were trying to use these rays to burn away skin diseases and tumors, apparently. Just your wife going 40 feet behind a brick wall every night so you can get that Bahamas tan we all want. Basically, people's teeth and hair started falling out all over. Not that long ago. Nana was just sitting in her chair, knitting with some x-ray machine, doing work on her skin, you know? The clients of Trico Salons had clients placed in front of a large mahogany box with a small window in front of it. A switch was then turned on and a timer set for the period of exposure. Five minutes of exposure. And then lather, rinse, and repeat. Unfortunately, it caused severe burns and skin damage, basal cell carcinomas, tumors, ulcers in the lungs, and lymph nodes all over. Just a half an hour in front of an x-ray machine. Holy smokes. Number two, radium. You've got radium eyes. Guitar Hero, best song, 100%. Also, apparently a very deadly element. Helen Cavendish, a staple of high society salons in London, was well regarded when it came to the latest in beauty treatments. In 1911, she launched a range of products utilizing a new radioactive element called radium which became a hot new elixir of sorts. By the early 1900s, many beauticians were tinkering around trying to find the perfect consumer use for it. Cavendish products included shampoos, hair growers, and face creams, all made with radioactive radium water. White's radium hair food, Frederick Godfrey's Renair radioactive antiseptic hair tonic, the O-Radium hat pad, they were all over. They were getting witty back then, you know? Until everyone's jaw started falling off, yeah. Seems like the radioactive element in the radium just has some nasty effects on the old body. Necrosis of the bones means it's just kind of slowly deteriorating you. Yeah. No side effects at all. Just glowing in the dark every night before bed. Honey, 
Have you seen my elixir? Number one, parasites. Of course, not everything we design to make us look better, fresher, and younger in life is chemically engineered. No, no, some are natural and organic. Like belladonna drops, for instance, right out of the ground. And beetles for pleasant colognes and perfumes. <sighs> and of course, our calorie counter friend, the tapeworm. This very popular diet works by swallowing a pill that has a tapeworm egg inside of it. When the egg hatches, the tapeworm grows inside your body and eats whatever you're eating. Well, helps you eat. Kind of like a lady in the tramp type situation in your belly. And of course, you'd never guessed it, from the Victorian era. As illustrated in the Ugly Girl Papers by S.D. Powers, a popular read in Victorian England. One invention created by Dr. Myers of Sheffield attempted to lure the tapeworm in or out by inserting a cylinder with food via the digestive tract. Yeah, no surprise that many patients choked to death before the tapeworm was successfully removed or inserted. Not to mention other intestinal infections one would develop. It's a bug living inside you. You know, just to keep that 31 waste. Kicking off our list at number 10, the Indian red scorpion. Scorpions are underrated. We always talk about spiders or snakes or whatever. How about scorpions? How about somewhere right in the middle? These things are like lobsters mixed with snakes mixed with spiders. It's terrible. If you live in a place that has scorpions, I'm so, so, so sorry. Indian red scorpions are of course found in India and they're also found in Nepal, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, and they're the most venomous out there of the entire species. So if you see this one specifically, Run. The fatality rate here is around 40% if you get bit by one of these, so it's about 50-50. That's, that's fun. You'll know if it's an Indian red scorpion because you'll start to sweat like crazy. You'll probably throw up immediately. You may or may not start convulsing right off the bat, and most likely your body will just shut down and you'll pass out. So if any of that happens, yeah, it's probably the Indian red scorpion. Their venom is potentially groundbreaking. You see, scientists are figuring out a way to fight cancer with it as we speak, so yeah. It's like, eh, it's got a fence with the thing first, stay very far away, and then we might solve cancer. I don't know. Would you fight a scorpion to cure cancer? Comment down below. Number nine, Jimson Weed. Sounds like the name of a small town auto mechanic. Yeah, it's Jimson Weed over there. Sounds like a nice dude. Well, in reality, Jimson Weed is a very mean old man. You don't want to talk to this guy at all. The Jimson Weed flower is white or violet, and it often looks pretty harmless. And growing up to five feet tall, it's going to catch your eye. It's going to bop out. You're going to see it at some point. Now, the seed pod in the middle, it looks like something Bowser's minions would throw at you. It's terrifying. It's a spiky little seed pod. It looks evil, right? This is your sign. Avoid this plant and also don't breathe around this plant. I know, just hold your breath and then run away. That's all you have to do. Don't inhale Jimson weed. That's a bad strain, my friends. It's a terrible strain. This plant can cause hallucinations, seizures, breathing problems, and your heart will speed up like crazy. It's named after Jamestown weed because back in 1676, British soldiers got too close to the plant and they ended up hallucinating for 11 days straight. It was also reported that they grinned like monkeys and they were kissing each other. Yeah, so that's why you don't eat this plant. You'll end up kissing all your homeboys. Fun fact, this grows in Southern Ontario, AKA where I am right now. This weed grows behind our studio in the summertime. I see it every year and I get so scared. So if I'm ever in here hallucinating, you know I f***ed up on my break. That's what happened. Number eight, the Carolina Reaper. Yeah, this one's real hot. This one's real hot. I don't do well with peppers, so kudos if you do it. Yeah, I'm throwing hot peppers on this list. Why not? Do you know what happens if you touch a Carolina Reaper and then you accidentally make contact? with your eyeball. It's not great, I'll tell you that for free. It's officially the world's hottest pepper. The Carolina Reaper is 200 times more intense than that of a jalapeno pepper. So if you're having nachos and you get one of those stuck on the bottom of a chip, yeah, it's that by, you know, that times 200. It's horrible, I would faint, I can't do it. If you eat one of these peppers, headaches will linger for a while as well. Measuring in the Scoville heat units, it's up in the two millions, so. If you're one of those Scoville guys, now you know the stats. Peppers like the scorpion pepper, for example, that falls just underneath it. This is still top dog, right? Now, of course, you can touch these peppers if they're handled properly. They add a nice little spicy flavor to your meal, all that good stuff, but if you handle it improperly, you're gonna be patting your eyes with cloths full of milk. That's what you don't wanna do right there. One user from Reddit shared their experience after barely touching a pepper and then rinsing their hands with water. They almost went blind because of this. So yeah, wash them twice. Wash it twice. Number seven, the rosary pea. Anything that starts with the, you know it's bad news. Well, the good news here is that the rosary pea doesn't look like something that you want to eat, unlike deadly nightshade berries. That looks delicious. It looks like a ladybug. It's all red, it's got a black spot on the top. It looks kind of evil. It looks like something the devil himself would offer you. Just a scary red pea. No one wants that. I don't like green peas, let alone red ones, fuck that. Eating just one of these peas can cause death. 
Just like that, just like a poison. The Rosary P has been the culprit in many jewelry makers' deaths, believe it or not. See, this P was often used as a beat due to its mesmerizing natural colors. You know, draws the eye and really gets your attention. But what would happen is while they were poking a hole through the P, sometimes the needle would slip and poke a finger or two. Now, normally, this is just another day for somebody into the arts and crafts, but the poison would then enter your bloodstream, and then, at that point, that's a wrap. Like I said about the berries earlier, if you're not sure, just walk away. Don't just sniff random bushes. Don't lick any weird rocks. Don't eat any strange berries. Do I have to tell you this? Please. Number six, you. Yeah, it literally has the word ew in it, so you shouldn't forget this one. You equals ew. It's also referred to as ground hemlock. A little less fun, but despite how they look, these aren't even berries. They're cones, almost, or they're bells. Either way, they look poison. They don't look appetizing, which is great. The main toxin that we're playing with here when it comes to you is taxol. Now, taxol is commonly used in chemotherapy. Pretty powerful stuff. Right now, we're at the point where we're making taxol in a lab because their populations haven't exactly sprung back into action yet. So yeah, lab made toxic bells. Stay away, please, please. If you ingest Taxol, you're moments away from experiencing hypothermia, seizures, respiratory failure, and you may just enter a coma. Yeah, it only takes half a gram of these flat pointed needles to take you out, the more you know. I like these knowledge lists here on B. It's like, hey, don't touch or eat any of this. All right, have fun out there. Number five, stonefish. This next one is great at disguising itself, so good luck out there, folks. The stonefish, he's a spiny dude. Now each of its 13 spots also happen to be filled with venom. So if you're taking a late night dip, watch out for rocks that are blinking at you. You wanna avoid those ones. The other ones are fine. Those ones that are doing this with the spikes, Nah, those ones suck. These fish look angry all the time, and I don't blame them. At least an octopus is cute, you know what I mean? What the hell is this? Is that even a fish? Its venom is lethal to humans, so if you're watching this and you're a human who lives in, you guessed it, Australia, shout out to Bridget, you better wear steel toe boots to the beach because these guys are just sitting there waiting. Stonefish don't use their venom to hunt. They only shoot venom out of their spines if pressure is applied to them, so yeah, they're, they're, they're lazy. They just lie there and wait for someone else to bump into them, like that big guy at the mall that we don't like. That's like walking in a minefield. I'm glad I know this. I wish I didn't know this, but I'm glad that I do. Number four, deadly decor. Throughout history, many ancient civilizations used creative ways to color their clothing or to paint buildings or tombs, whatever, you name it. Nowadays, we can pick the exact shade we want to fill in a family room and we can see how the room's gonna look online on our iPad before we even touch a paintbrush. It's honestly bull but back in the day, they barely even knew about the toxic fumes they were inhaling the entire time. Like white lead, for example. Not that great in the lung department. Around 2,500 years ago, humans produced this color, right? It was one of a kind. It was one of the earliest examples of pigmentation. Pretty big deal. Hey, this guy made color. How sweet is that? It's mentioned back in the third century by philosophers, and you'd create it by mixing metallic lead with vinegar. Now, the fine lead shavings dissolve into the strong vinegar, and then it's dried, sifted, and then mixed again with even stronger vinegar, and then it's dried up in the sun. And then you can start painting. How exhausting is that? Now, European painters use this white lead, but once it's inhaled, ingested, or even makes direct skin contact, then you'd experience muscle pains and spasms and blood pressure would skyrocket. And of course, you'd get extreme headaches and you couldn't finish painting your wall, which is honestly the worst tragedy of them all. Number three, comb stars. Ocean life is by far the scariest thing out there. Olivia and I are going on vacation in a few days and I'm scared of starfish. That's what I'm thinking about right now. We have no idea what's in our oceans. We discover some crazy sh down there every single year. Some deep sea fish with bioluminescence, they look like they're aliens. I don't know. Some are aliens, some are weird looking, others are natural predators. Like the comb star, for example, a starfish that naturally contains tetrodoxin, which is this deadly neurotoxin that can immediately cause paralysis. Yeah, and that's starfish. Who knew? Imagine having this guy in Finding Nemo would not get a sequel. That would definitely not get a sequel. Movie would be 13 minutes flat. Per every gram of comb star flesh, there is enough toxin to take out 500 mice. And no, we don't have an antidote for that yet. Where was this back in the Black Plague? All those rats? Just saying, would have been a hell of a fight. Number two, polonium. This radioactive metalloid is extremely rare. That's pretty lucky. Unless you're Homer Simpson or you work in a you know, radiation plant. I don't think you're gonna be seeing any glowy substance anytime soon near your persons. Polonium is used primarily as a heat source to an atomic level. It glows bright blue because it's so strong that it actually excites the air molecules surrounding it. See, unlike acid, the particles in polonium don't have enough power to actually get through your skin, so you can, you know, grab it and dance around with it like Homer does, but it's still very radioactive. One gram of polonium produces the same amount of radiation as five kilograms of radium. That's not great. 
This element is 250,000 times more toxic than cyanide. One gram can take out 10 million people. 10 million people. A real life use of this element was used against the former spy, Alexander Litvinenko. Just a trace amount was slipped into his tea and then he suffered for 23 days before eventually horribly passing away. Yeah, worst English breakfast ever. No tip. And finally, number one, the blue ringed octopus. I told you that he was cute, right? But don't do this. Do not do what you're about to see. Do not pick up a small, squishy, blue ringed octopus. In fact, just don't even look at them. Just go away. The blue ringed octopus is commonly found in coastal waters of Australia and Japan, and sometimes they're not even in the water. Sometimes an influencer's got them, and they're showing everyone at the beach. Hey, come poke it. See what happens. Don't do that. I'm here to tell you, never do that. They use their tentacles to walk along the ocean floor. They're fast, and they can move in small crevices, so you won't even see them coming. And ideally, that's where you want them to stay. Not in the palm of your hand. Not like that. They're dazzling, but they're deadly. The blue ring octopus is lethal enough to take out 26 adults. They pack quite a punch, and again, they're tiny. You'll have no idea. They're filled with two different types of venom. Imagine that, two for the price of one. Have fun. The first can kill their prey easily, no questions asked, and the other can be used as a defense. Either way, this encounter is bad news. Not something you want to experience on any level. They don't get very large either, so keep an eye out. Again, stonefish, rocks that blink, squishy octopus that'll kill you. Just wear your water shoes, that's all I'm saying. Number 10, jiggle machines. Oh, the great effort people will go to not make any effort. The self-exercisers or vibration machines were a popular fad back in the 1950s and 60s. The idea? Lose weight fast and easy with the help of modern science and machines. Trouble is, they, they don't really work at all. In a way, it's pretty similar to the snake oil men of the past. A common issue, a weird solution, and then a great marketing, well, that would make for a fad. Someone had to just make bank on it, I know they did. I mean, I get the appeal, I, I do. I wish I could be a 1950s housewife with a vibration machine, so I could be beach ready. But being a 1950s housewife means I'm so busy. But with a belt machine, it means I can keep my hands free, so I can reach for my favorite brand of menthol cigarettes and my third morning martini. Boy, I sure love this modern world. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Number nine, ear scoops. When I think of all the things I use a scoop for, I think of ice cream and sugar for my tea. Well now, I'm gonna be thinking about how people in the Viking era, all the way to the later post-Tudor times, used to scoop out their own earwax. Yes, an ear scoop was a tiny little brass or copper spoon with a twisted handle that went to a point. The spoon part was used for scooping, while the pointed end was used for pooping. No, I just wanted to say that. It was actually used for cleaning the fingernails of dirt. Thanks, ear scoops. Now I'm never going to look at a spoon the same way again. Number eight, long neck. Look, this one probably isn't a surprise to anyone. There must be like 20 documentaries on the subject alone, but today we're talking about the long necked women found in some African cultures. In a nutshell, you pile on gold rings around your wife's neck until she's impersonating a totally winnable ring toss game at the county fair. The end result is a neck that's long just as the day is long. Pretty long. And in these cultures, this is considered very beautiful. Now, who am I to judge? I can't. However, as a lawyer, doctor, detective, and fireman here at Bumblebee, I'm gonna not recommend the giraffe look. While at first glance, it may look like the neck is being stretched, it's really the shoulders that are being dropped forcibly by having so many rings piled up on your neck. That's just, that's not healthy for you. Anyone in the comment section that has played contact sport will tell you that dropping your shoulders like that is not good. I like my thick neck the way it is, thank you very much. Number seven, lead cosmetics. Did anyone know we still sort of do this today? Are we insane? Lead has been used in makeup for an extremely long time. It was found in cosmetics back in classical antiquity. So that's as far back as the eighth century BC. In the 18th century though, women would mix lead with vinegar to make themselves look more and more pale, which was a beauty standard back in the day. Gotta love looking like you never see the sun. Now, while the white lead that was used wasn't easily absorbed through the skin, the mixture of white lead with other chemicals and ingredients to create makeup and other products did indeed cause lead poisoning. And even though people knew this, they continued to keep on using it? Number six, hangover mask. Okay, picture this. It's 1946, WW2 is over. Life's getting back to normal. You live in a major city, so you decide to take a night on the town with your friends. Well, one too many Manhattans later, and well, you're not even sure if you're still on the island of Manhattan. You have what the drinkers of the world call a hangover. Let me know in the comments without too much grim detail about your worst hangover. 
What was your poison of choice? I'm curious. Many men and ladies have found themselves in bad places in the morning after uh, so many drinks. Only if there was something to cure said hangover. Well, ladies, you're in luck. The hangover mask aims to cure that. It's basically just a mask with plastic ice cubes. However, I'm gonna get a little personal and say that every hangover I've ever had, I didn't need a face mask. I needed some water and a bucket since the bathroom was too far away. I don't, I don't know why your, would your face need to be cold? I don't really understand that part. I don't know. Number five, tooth removal. Here, I found this quote from a dentist in the medieval period who would travel from town to town. Take some newts by some cold lizards and those nasty beetles which are found in fens during the summertime. Calcine them in an iron pot and make a powder thereof. Wet the forefinger of the right hand, insert it in the powder, and apply to the tooth frequently, refraining from spitting it off. When the tooth will fall away without pain, it is proven. Hey, if it is proven, who am I to say otherwise? Just some lowly YouTube post. If you weren't using your Newton Beetle powder to remove your tooth, then it looks like you're going the much more old fashioned tooth pulling route. And that was much, much worse. They had rudimentary anesthetics that was possibly used then, but you had to worry about bleeding and infection. I think I'll stick with my uh, beetle newt powder. Number four, rejuvenique mask. I got another mask for you guys, I know, but I saw this and I, I just didn't know what to think, honestly. It's a mask that you wear, but it's plugged into a battery pack and it sends pulsations to your face. After, of course, you've applied the toning gel. What the heck is toning gel? I don't know. This is supposed to tone your face, apparently. Your jawline, or I just feel like plunging your face into a mask that's hooked up to a voltage. Uh, that's, a, that's just a bad idea. Oh, yeah, and also a bad idea is the mask itself. Look at this thing. I mean, that's a heinous looking mask right there. You can come home from school one day, and your mom's gonna be sitting at the kitchen table looking up Michael Myers. Oh, that's not okay. Please don't do horror movie beauty stuff, ladies. Please, no. I don't wanna be scared. I don't like scary stuff. Number three, spit black. Back in the roaring 20s, they had mascara, just like we do now. But unlike the little tubes of stuff we have, they had a block or cake of the stuff. To get it to a state where they could actually apply it to their lashes, they would need to add water. And what's the quickest form of water? That's right, it's your spit. The mascara cake stuff was made of soap and coloring, which you don't really want to put near your eyes. But then, knowing that people are using their spit to apply it, it's your own spit, so I guess if you're comfortable with that, you do you, pal, but makes me think of dudes using their saliva to like lick their eyebrows. Ick. Number two, sharp teeth. I like Shark Boy and Lava Girl just as much as the next guy. However, that doesn't mean I want to look and feel like a shark. This one just creeps me out. I, I, I don't hate a dentist, but I think everyone can agree with me that teeth getting drilled is just uncomfortable. It just kind of sucks. Especially if there's like powdered tooth in your mouth. That's just the worst. It's kind of gross too. I don't know. Well, what I do know, however, is that there are some cultures out there where the ladies get their teeth sharpened or filed. Oh yes, and there ain't no dentist office there either. This is bite the leather, you're in dad's kitchen kind of operation. Oh God. I would honestly talk more about it, but the editor's gonna show some pictures and I'm gonna have to stop because if I see him, I would get queasy. I don't wanna see that stuff. I, I, no thank you, no teeth sharp. No, no. Number one, mercury laced skin cream. Secure Gorad's Oriental Cream and take your first step to a new lasting beauty. That's right, over time you too can develop dark rings around your eyes, lose some of those pearly whites, and get stunning black gums. That's because Gorad's Oriental Cream is made with calomel. What is calomel I hear you ask? It's a mercury compound. Yeah, it doesn't sound so good anymore, does it? While the women of the 1920s who used this product, maybe once or twice, would be fine, those who used it over long periods of time subjected themselves to mercury poisoning. But hey, Gorad's cream came in white, flesh, and whatever the hell color Rachel is supposed to be. Kicking off the list at number 10, eyelash extensions. Ugh, right off the hop, here we go. Nowadays, beauty products are safer. They're made in a cleaner way. We're going the right direction when it comes to putting things on or around our eyes. You know, thank God. But back in the late 1800s, we weren't quite there yet. No, not even close. This right here is an ad from the Independent Journal back from 1899. And it says, if your eyes are unattractive, you may make them irresistible by transplanting the hair. 
just the hair. Transplanted eyelashes and eyebrows are the latest things in the way of personal adornment. An ordinary fine needle is threaded with a long hair, generally taken from the head of the person to be operated upon. Doink! Oh, let's do a little gray, why not? <laughs> yeah, they would use a white illicit substance that's illegal that I can't say on YouTube. They would rub that around your eyes just to numb the eyelids. How stupid is that? The doctor would thread the doctor would then thread your hair through the lids and then cut them down so they're even. Yeah, I thought peeling an eyelash off at the end of the night was bad. I would see that a lot, one of those. This is way worse. Never doing this. Number nine, Doramad toothpaste. Doramad. Are you mad? That should have been the slogan. Are you mad? The worst toothpaste to ever exist. Doramad, yeah, that was the one. Back in the 40s, people were brushing their teeth with radiation. Yeah, even on the actual tube, it says its radioactive ingredients increase the defense of teeth and gums. Mmm, I can feel it working already. I'm gonna throw up. Doctors hate this one trick, here we go. The tube continues to, well, lie to its users, saying the radioactive cells are loaded with new life energy. The bacteria is then hindered in their destroying effect, leaving behind a pleasant and mild, refreshing taste. Awesome, yeah, I broke both my front teeth in half when I was younger. If only I had Doramad. I would have just bounced off the pavement and then just kept running. I would have had invincible teeth. Yeah, this toothpaste did not work and it did not stick around. It was horrible for humans. Its radioactivity was low in comparison, but like, its radioactivity was low. I can't even say that. Imagine this coming out now, no way. And just remember, good gums don't bleed, they glow. Doramad. Number eight, radioactive water. Yeah, you thought Dasani water was bad? Okay, just wait, buckle up. Back in 1932, Eben Byers, a 41-year-old steel manufacturer and golf pro, <laughs> hey -o, met his fate in a horrible way. In a constant battle with arm pain and fatigue, Byers was told to drink radioactive water by his physiotherapist. And he was like, okay, you bet. Physiotherapist, anything you say, doctor. He said that drinking this product would help with the golfer's arm pain and fatigue. Magically, okay. Each of these bottles contained one microgram of radium and one microgram of esthorium. Yeah, the guy would drink radiation after every meal and subsequently lost weight, but sadly, he also developed bone necrosis in his jaw. Yeah, Dasani doesn't sound too bad now, does it? Number seven, Thoradia. If somebody told you that your face was glowing back in the late 30s, that would be the highest compliment. Now, it's got a little Edward Cullen vampire vibes. L little different now, but still nice. Thoradia was a beauty product company that made radioactive creams, powders, lipsticks, ugh, anything to get your glowy glam on, they made. And they made it in a horrible way. They made thorium and radium lead products to tone facial tissues and remove wrinkles. How insane does that sound coming out of my mouth? Look at cosmetic companies now. Imagine Thoradia just dropping on shelves casually. The product was doing so well that it circulated in Italy, Portugal, Romania, Egypt, Belgium, France, you name it, it was all over the world. It wasn't until 1937 until the French government caught on to these horrible side effects, thank God, and then they pulled it from shelves. Imagine seeing a friend and they're literally glowing, vampire for sure, or radiation. Number six, the trico system. I was talking about plucking my uh, unibrow the other day. I was really going in on that, so. We had to throw this one in. Instead of plucking your eyebrows in the late 1920s, you would ideally want to use the trico system to remove any, you know, unwanted hair. This device was booming back in the 20s. Hair salons had to have this system. And come 1925, there were over 75 trico systems installed in beauty shops all around. And what you would do is you would sit at this large desk, face a small window for a few minutes, and boom, just like that, hair gone. Yeah, just 20 quick visits to your local trico system and then boom, then your hair is magically gone. Just 20 visits, easy. You have the time of the day, right? Their trick here was x-ray technology directly on their face. Not a, not a bright idea. So four years later in 1929, trico system side effects were so well known, you know, being ulcers, carcinoma, keratosis, death. This was not the solution you wanted. So again, pulled from stores. Number five, Gorad's cream. Gorad's Oriental Cream hit the market back in 1936. This cream was supposed to, you know, freshen up your skin, make you look lighter, younger, tighter, whatever Paul Rudd's doing. But instead, this skin cream had one user ending up in a book that's very, you know, Chamber of Horror styles. Just what not to do in terms of cosmetics and bad stuff. This magic ingredient was meant to magically make you beautiful, and it had some magic mercury inside the product. It was horrible. Not something you want on your face ever. Mercury, no fun. I don't recommend. 
Zero out of five, my friend. The results were haunting. This woman had soon developed black gums, her teeth loosened, and dark rings appeared around her eyes. It was haunting. It's called mercury poisoning, and it's not fun. Number four, fluoroscope. A proper measurement of the foot is the first step to a healthier lifestyle. If you're off by half a size in either width or length, you're setting yourself up for future problems. So when x-rays started being used to properly measure up family foot sizes in shoe stores, well, it sounded like an ideal start to an otherwise exhausting process. I worked in a shoe store while I was in school, so I get it, you know? The amount of stinky feet I've had to measure up with that metal cold, really cold metal thing? No thank you, gross. So in comes this new fluoroscope technology, right? Measure your feet, but make it cool, make it futuristic, right? Make it technological. This began in the 1920s. Everybody used these things, it was completely normal, and by the time the 40s rolled around, scientists were now concerned about the radiation level emitting off these machines, and eventually they too were banned. They're also really intimidating to look at. There's a speedometer on it, like for some reason. It doesn't look like an easy thing. It's, uh, it looks scary. It looks like a saw trap, you know what I mean? Number three, thallium. In the late 19th century, something called thallium acetate started to sweep the nation. It was a hair removal method, but originally thallium was prescribed for those who suffered with ringworm. Just in case you got both, here you go. So yeah, now we're getting a little concerned historically. Even so, thallium didn't do anything about said ringworm. That in itself was already a failed product. It made patients hair fall off. So the ringworm was easier to find doesn't actually help the issue, just makes it easier to find, I guess. So I guess that's helpful, I don't know, it's still bad. Eventually, thallium was sold by itself as a cream. It's very toxic, it should never touch your skin. This was once rat poison, historically, and then humans were then rubbing it around on their heads, casually. And that, that's insane. This was outlawed in the 30s, thankfully, but the fact that this was ever sold in history just baffles me, this whole list baffles me. Number two. Aqua Tifana, I love this one. Going back to the 1600s for this one. If you're a murderino, you know this one already. It's a good one. Aqua Tifana was a cosmetic that was sold to women back in the early 1600s. It was a cosmetic that also doubled down as a poison. Yeah, some naughty stuff going on here. The origins of said deadly cosmetic that was sold and you know, responsible for around 600 deaths is pretty wild. Back in 1632, two women, Francesca Lasarda and Tafiana D'Amato, they both created this poison so that when their husbands kissed them on the cheek, they would then be poisoned from the cream that they put on, right? This was a time where women were treated horribly, right? Like even worse than now, you know what I mean? Like. I was gonna say a time where women had less rights, but I'm like, eh, we're actually getting worse historically, so who knows? But eventually, Tiafana was caught and executed for her crimes, but her recipe, her recipe lived on. Her recipe carried on through her daughter, Yulia Tiafana. She took this deadly recipe to Rome and kept manufacturing it. Pretty badass, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it, obviously it's horrible in so many ways, but I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty smart, I think. Like if she was a villain in a Sherlock Holmes movie, we'd love her, know what I mean? Inside this cursed cosmetic was arsenic, lead, and belladonna. Colorless, tasteless, and one of the deadliest. And finally, number one, Vita Radium Suppositories. Hey, my favorite one historically, this is great. With guaranteed real radium, there we go, just in case you got that fake stuff, this is the real good stuff. The Home Products Company of Denver, Colorado came out with these suppositories, you know, back in 1930. And the way that they marketed these things is so funny and I have to end the list on it. It's one of my favorites ever. The company reaches out and says, weak discouraged men. If you are showing signs of slowing up in your actions and duties, perhaps if you have begun to lose your charm, your personality, your normal manly attitude, then certainly you want to stage a comeback. The man who has lost these precious attributes of youth knows how to appreciate their value. He realizes that happiness depends on his ability to perform the duties of a real man. Sweet glorious pleasures of life. Nature intended that you should enjoy them. Now is the time to act. And then these real men put radiated suppositories up their real How funny is that? They're like, are you a man? Yeah. Do you want to get back to business? Yeah. All right. Bend over. It's so stupid. This is so dangerous also, obviously, but like, it's so funny that they're so aggressive with this ad. Uh, the initial goal here was to, of course, feel better and, you know, feel like a real manly man again. But instead of waking up feeling refreshed, users eventually stopped waking up altogether. 